Welcome to my channel. warehouse in France, right on the Swiss border, where the most expensive material in the world is created. So Wikipedia seems confident, but I'm not so sure we can even call it material, because it's not made of regular matter. This stuff is the rarest and potentially the most dangerous on Earth. And scientists from around the world are just trying to figure out how to put it in a bottle and carry it across the street. Antimatter. But what is antimatter and why is there so little of it? It's the rarest substance on Earth. It's the rarest substance in the universe. But scientists theorize that the Big Bang should have created a universe with equal amounts of matter and antimatter. And yet we look around and see almost completely matter. Why? That is surprisingly one of the biggest unanswered questions in physics, and we're gonna dive into it. Hey, I'm Diana and you're watching Physics Girl. I am back in the United States, but I recently traveled to Switzerland, initially to speak at EPFL in Lausanne, but I decided to stop by the most impressive scientific facility on Earth. So we're in Geneva, Switzerland right now. Oh no, I'm going! We're in Geneva, Switzerland. This is the home of the United Nations. We're heading to the Large Hadron Collider, and I've never been, and I'm really excited. Ah! Um, okay, so what is this room? 
This is sort of the storage locker area. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, wow, storage, storage, locker. storage lockers. <laughs> so only people with access, special access can enter here. So. <laughs> so this is what they call the AD hall after okay. the anti-proton decelerator, the AD. Yeah. Yes. And so this decelerator um, is beneath us, beneath these concrete blocks. You yeah. see these yellow fences? Yeah. So that's the big ring going around. So the whole purpose of the AD hall is to house this ring inside of a concrete tunnel that slows down antimatter particles and then subsequently there are experiments that study it. We're, we're doing the opposite of the rest of CERN. Yeah. We don't like protons, we want the antiproton. We don't like accelerating, we want to decelerate. It's all shut down right now for maintenance, so we got to go down in the tunnel. Whoa. Wow, there's all this concrete and cement. Oh my gosh. I just went to Burning Man. I feel like a lot of people were wearing this stuff. <laughs> so the blue things, they are bending magnets. So okay. they're typically at the corners of your ring mm -hmm. and they will turn your beam, mm -hmm. you know, give it a kick or a, a turn. Yeah. The red ones are the quadrupole magnets. Okay. And they are used to focus the beam. It's like Legos, but instead, like each piece in the ring is a giant electromagnet. <laughs> it's not a coincidence that the antimatter factory is at CERN. You need these super energetic particles driven by the massive particle accelerators at CERN to create antimatter. Well, the way they are generated, you have these, you know, collisions, big amount of energy, and from this um, you automatically have a side product right. being antiprotons that are created. They need to direct the antiprotons toward the AD hall using these giant coils of wire. It's connected to some transformers, which will send this current to the magnet so you can have this tiny kick of your beam path. So all that specialized equipment and the crazy amounts of energy you use to create energetic particles is part of why antimatter is so expensive. In 2006, antimatter costs an estimated $25 billion per gram to make. Sounds like a lot, but that's just for positrons. For antiprotons, some estimates put the cost at about three quadrillion dollars per gram. To figure out why antimatter is so rare, we have to first look at why it can be so dangerous. When antimatter comes into contact with regular matter, they annihilate. They disappear and they turn into pure light energy. If one teaspoon of antimatter came into contact with regular matter, it would create an explosion large enough to destroy all of Manhattan. For comparison, you'd need about 200,000 metric tons of TNT to release the same amount of energy, or 10 nuclear bombs. To make it even more relatable, the amount of antimatter you would need to destroy the moon would be equivalent to the same mass of all the fish on Earth. Thirty-two in one of their cloud chambers, you know these tracks? They yeah. saw an electron with, let's say, the wrong charge. American physicist Carl Anderson detected this opposite electron and then published a paper calling it a positron, and the name stuck, which makes me wish that electrons were called negatrons. That'd be cool. Now, each matter particle has a brother or sister, and it has the same mass, 
but it has the opposite charge and the opposite magnetic moment. At least that's what our theories tell us. So this factory in Europe, its goal is to keep making and studying a material worth nearly trillions per ounce. What are they studying? Well, there's one big question keeping scientists interested. Scientists don't know why antimatter is so rare. So this experiment is called Puma. They want to bring this, you know, their bottle of antimatter to a facility across the street. And so there they have different elements that are radioactive. And so if you have antimatter interacting with this, you know, you will get annihilations. But the properties of what comes out of this annihilation will tell you something about how the neutrons and protons were distributed in these nuclei. And several other experimental groups hope to study the spectral lines of antihydrogen and compare them to hydrogen. And so we know exactly what colors hydrogen emits. But so we um, recently were able to do the same type of you know, spectroscopy, looking at the light that comes out of anti-hydrogen. And some experiments, like the one Elisa works on, are measuring the properties of antiprotons that they've trapped to see whether they're the same as proton properties. Base is purely antiprotons. So they typically, or we typically, have a reservoir of antiprotons, about, let's say, 200 antiprotons that we can store in this panning trap mm -hmm. that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can keep this, the record was 400 years. 400 years! <laughs> 400 years, 400 days. And so we take one antiproton at the time, put this in our measurement trap, and we try to measure its properties, so charge, mass, and magnetic moment. So that's the answer to our question. Why is there so little antimatter in the universe? We don't know yet. That's why all these really, really smart people are doing crazy experiments, trying to figure it out at CERN. And I'm really excited to follow along and see what they find, because I know they'll find something. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and happy anti-physicsing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ قد مكروا مكرهم وعند الله مكرهم وإن كان مكرهم لتزول منه الجبال